All right, in this video, we are going to be discussing the NeoVim Lua Buffer API. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we look here, these items are in this nvim underscore buff namespace. You'll notice you have things like this nvim list buffs, but that is a global because you're listing all the buffers. You're not working within a buffer. To know the difference, you can do API buffer, and this will walk you through all of the items in that area to see what is buffer scoped, what is specific for things within a buffer. But then you have the global API. where you have things like create buffer and get current buffer and list buffers. And those are global. They're not within the buffer. So that's the difference between the global API and the buffers API. And again, we are looking at the API buffer, which is these buffer functions. All right. So let's just take a look at a few of these so you can get an idea of what you're working with. Now, we'll use a plugin called nvim notify. So instead of writing these values like we would normally and we print them down below where you'd normally see messages printed, we'll go ahead and create a function here and we'll call it alert. And what we'll do is we'll require notify okay all right notify will take body and we'll just always set it to info and you'll see what we're doing here in a second and then this will be buffer api demo and we'll let's go ahead and format that. And then what we'll do is to test this. We'll just say code smell. Okay. All right. We'll make sure we have body in there. And now let's run it. And you'll see up there buffer API demo code smell. All right. That's what we want to use to print these out nicely. You should definitely check out NVIM Notify so that you can have those nice little alerts if you wanted them. You also have the option of doing, you know, a print and then vim.inspect if we were getting a variable, if it's just going to be a string. And you see at the bottom out printing out code smell there and you can always do that too but i think nvim notify is really nice let's look at a few of these buffer functions the first one that we'll look at is buffer lines so we'll call it buffer lines and everything that we're working with is in the buff namespace here and say get lines and so we want the current buffer and we'll start from zero and we'll go to say three all right and you may get to something like strict indexing if you looked at the snippet from earlier it gives you some information but one thing that's nice to do is set things up so that you can look at these things in the NeoVim source code to find out what they really are. Because if we go to help here, nvim buff get lines, you can see that it says strict indexing here. You can assume that's probably Boolean, but 
you don't know for sure, we type it out here. We get in vim buff get lines and we look at that and we can see that it's a boolean here with our completion. But if we don't have those snippets set up or we don't want them, we don't like them. One thing to do is to use telescope to grip the particular string that you're on within the NeoVim source code so you can go and take a look at what's really going on because not everything's documented because some of that is still in discussions or there may be a special note in there to tell you what's going on. So sometimes it's good to just look at the source code and see what's happening. So here you can see that we have strict indexing. You can see there clearly it's a Boolean and it explains the same thing that you saw in the help. So now you know for sure that it's a Boolean and so you know that you need to pass something Boolean to it. Okay, and so in our case, we'll say zero that. And then what we'll do is we will print out our buffer lines. All right, so we'll save that and we'll do that. And you can see that it's taking from zero to three and showing us the function above. Okay, the next one we'll do is take a look at mark positions. Let's create, we'll just say mark position and nvim buff get mark. And the get mark returns a tuple of the mark position. And what we want to do is say we want to look in the current buffer, we'll say we want to look for a mark called T. So let's see if there is a mark called T. Now there's an uppercase T, but we don't want that. We want a lowercase T. And then what we'll do is we will alert the mark position. Say Vim inspect and we'll make sure that we can parse this and display it. All right, and so then let's go ahead and put a mark for T here on, well, let's go there, MT, okay. All right, and then we'll go ahead and run this. And you'll see that it's at 727, which is just where we put it. So if we look at the marks and we have the lowercase T here, it's at 727. And so next, we'll take a look at buff options. And these are options that are set at the buffer level. And so one thing that we can do is we know that we're in a Lua file. So let's look at our Lua file type plugin. And we can see here that we have a shift width, text width, color column, all right? So we'll go ahead and just take a look at shift width. So let's just say shift width. And then we are going to say in vim buff get, and we want option. And we want from this particular buffer and the option that we want is going to be shift width, all right? And then an option isn't just a string, there's more to it. So we'll need to get a human readable item or string to print. So again, we'll do inspect and we'll do shift width there. And then we'll fire it up. And then you can see shift width is two. All right, great. Now what we can do is take a look at something that you'll probably find very useful, which is going to be the file name of the buffer you're working with. I can't tell you the number of times that I wanted to be able to just have this for whatever reason, for a plugin, for a mapping, for all kinds of different things. Get name. And again, 
zero for the current buffer. And that's all you have to do to get that. And then we'll alert the file name. Okay, we'll go up and kill that off so that we don't see both things. Fire that up. And look at that, the full path to the file that we're in. And that is very useful. It's a good idea to pop through and take a look at anything in the API buffer or buffer function section and not to get them confused with the buffer things that you might find in globals, which are very useful, like getting all the buffers that you have and creating buffers. A lot of good stuff in the globals to take a look at. And you can always go over and cross-reference in the NeoVim source code. And I definitely recommend building from source. That way you have the source code and have the latest stuff. A reminder that I am using NeoVim 0.6. Very, very latest commit in the master branch. And so I'm always on the bleeding edge. Most of the stuff should be there for you. But if it's not, then I recommend going out and getting the latest NeoVim code and running it. Hopefully this is helpful. All right, well, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. See you next time with more outstanding content.